Well, the cool thing about understanding the role of the environment is that actually ants are a fantastic model. And the reason is because um, they're what's called polyphenic, uh, which essentially means uh, that a single genome or genotype can actually give rise to a, a broad array of phenotypes depending on the way that the environment interacts with the development of the organism. And so basically, ants are a fantastic model to study how various different types of morphologies, for instance, are actually generated by the influence of the environment. Basically, um, for the question that asked in terms of how do you get uh, quantitative size variation within a worker cast. So uh, size is extremely important in ant society. Different sizes are optimized for specific allocations of certain tasks um, and to divide the labor amongst individuals in the group. And um, what we found was that um, there's actually, uh, along with that quantitative trait variation, um, a great deal of understanding in terms of the genetic basis, so quantitative genetic variation that explains this. But what we hadn't known was uh, the contribution of non-genetic mechanisms, which actually act as uh, mediators of how the environment can influence the way the genome actually dynamically unfolds to generate this type of variation. And so, um, in that system, we actually discovered that quantitative epigenetic variation can alongside with quantitative genetic variation together promote uh, or enhance phenotypic possibilities for any given genetic locus, uh, in particular uh, quantitative DNA methylation. Uh, and in terms of the, the question of how do novel casts develop and evolve, um, we actually took a developmental genetic and hormonal approach and uh, tried to understand how do, how do completely novel casts. So for instance, a worker and a soldier that you find in a colony, um, they're completely different from one another. How do those develop? And, uh, and, f and most importantly, how does the role of hormones, which again are mediators of the environment, play in making those and, and in giving rise to their evolution? For the epigenetic work that we did, the surprise was that this, this mechanism, which has been known very, very well studied by brilliant minds to be important for the production of binary traits, whether it's cancer, no cancer, big, small, uh, bad behavior, good behavior. Um, but the novelty of that work that surprised us in our, as we were doing it, we were just trying to understand how quantitative variation might be generated. We didn't, we didn't realize that we'd actually find uh, uh, evidence that quantitative DNA methylation uh, can actually contribute to the production of that quantitative variation and not just the types of binary traits that we've used to see. So that was really surprising and I'm sure that this surprise will go much further to explain all kinds of other quantitative traits uh, that are being uh, produced by a quantitative epigenetics of all kinds of different genes aside from the ones that we focused on. And in terms of um, surprises in the, work, in the super soldier work in, in the group Fidoli, um, from the get-go, everything that we were finding was counterintuitive to what we thought. I mean, there's eight species out of a thousand that have this novel cast, eight. And uh, it turns out that rather than them just being this derived situation, they've actually independently evolved. And one of them is actually one of the most ancient living species of this group on this planet. Um, and that was a huge surprise to us when we found this. And uh, furthermore, when uh, we looked at how they developed, we found that they developed in a similar fashion and that we were able to induce this in species that didn't have it. All of these things unfolded as they did, but, uh, and quite serendipitously so. Um, but, but it was the beauty of the work. It was, it was a constant surprise. And, you know, we were trying to address questions about these ants. And in the end, the real surprise was that we were actually starting to get at fundamental, towards fundamental insight a uh, 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 biological insight for all kinds of organisms. You know, the idea that uh, the organism itself can be so cool, it's not just an abstract com composition of parts and mechanisms, that they can be so fascinating that you can be in, just in, enamored with them. Um, it adds a whole other trajection of, of pursuit or ways to generate questions. So aside from generating questions that holes in the literature or doing experiments in the lab, and finding something you can't explain and starting to generate new questions that way. There's the entire other way to generate questions, which is actually going out in the wild and, and seeing nature. In my case, it was going out and collecting ants. I mean, I got to meet some of the greatest people 
uh, who knew natural history to the, to the T, who, who just had such a great appreciation for all the different dynamics of different organisms, plants and animals, interacting with each other. And it gave such a beautiful context for the work that I was doing. So it wasn't just this little finite dot uh, answering one question. I was able to build context that ranged from you know, integrating different lab approaches and mechanistic thoughts, but also in terms of what are the importance of what I, I'm doing in terms of natural phenomenon, in terms of life that you see out there in the wild. And so I'd say, you know, take a second to go out in the wild and be inspired by what's around you.